I've always preferred driving at night. The empty roads and quiet darkness offered a kind of solace. But one foggy evening, that peace was shattered. I was heading home after a long shift when I spotted a figure on the side of the road. A young woman, standing alone in the mist, her thumb outstretched. She looked vulnerable, her long dark hair clinging to her pale face, her dress too thin for the cold. Something about her compelled me to stop, despite the eerie atmosphere. She climbed in without a word, her eyes fixed straight ahead. I asked where she was heading, and she muttered an address a few miles away. As we drove, the tension in the car was palpable. I tried to make small talk, but she only responded in short, emotionless phrases. The fog grew thicker, making the world outside the car disappear into a gray blur. Then, out of nowhere, she asked, Do you believe in ghosts? Her question caught me off guard. I laughed nervously and said, Not really. Why do you ask? She turned to me, her eyes dark and unreadable. Because sometimes, they're closer than you think. A chill ran down my spine. But before I could respond, she pointed to a narrow, tree-lined road. That's the turn, she said. I followed her directions, turning onto a secluded road that wound through dense woods. The trees closed in around us, and the headlights barely cut through the fog. Finally, she told me to stop in front of an old, dilapidated house. Thank you, she whispered, then slipped out of the car and disappeared into the mist. The house looked abandoned, and I felt a deep unease as I drove away, her parting words echoing in my mind. The next day, I couldn't stop thinking about the hitchhiker. There was something haunting about her, something that didn't add up. I decided to go back to the house in daylight, hoping to find some answers. When I arrived, the fog had lifted, revealing the house in all its decaying glory. It was worse than I remembered. Cracked windows, peeling paint, and an air of abandonment that made my skin crawl. Despite my unease, I walked up the path and pushed open the creaking door. Inside, the house was a wreck, filled with dust and cobwebs. It was clear that no one had lived there for years. But then, something caught my eye. A faded photograph lying on the floor. I picked it up, brushing off the dust, and my heart skipped a beat. The woman in the photo was the hitchhiker. But what sent a chill through me was the date on the back. It was from over 20 years ago. I was about to leave when I heard a faint noise coming from upstairs. A soft, shuffling sound, like someone moving around. My instincts told me to get out of there, but curiosity pushed me forward. I climbed the creaking stairs and followed the sound to a room at the end of the hall. I pushed the door open and saw her standing by the window, her back to me. She was exactly as I remembered, but when she turned to face me, her eyes were hollow, empty sockets staring into nothingness. She opened her mouth, and a low, mournful wail filled the room. I fled the house, my heart pounding in my chest, and didn't stop until I was back in my car. I sped away, the image of her empty eyes burned into my memory. I couldn't sleep that night, haunted by what I had seen. I needed to know more, so I went to the local library the next day and searched through old newspapers. It didn't take long to find the tragic story. The woman I had picked up was named Emily. She had died in a car accident on that very road over 20 years ago. She had been on her way to visit her estranged parents when her car skidded off the road in the fog and crashed into a tree. Her body was found days later, but locals claimed to have seen her hitchhiking on that road ever since. The story had become an urban legend, with some saying her spirit was still trying to make it home. Most people dismissed it as nonsense, but after my encounter, I knew there was some truth to it. I realized that I had picked up a ghost, a restless spirit doomed to wander the lonely roads. And now I felt a connection to her, as if she was reaching out for help. I avoided that road for weeks, but the thought of Emily lingered in my mind. I knew I had to go back, to somehow help her find peace. One night, I found myself driving back to that stretch of highway, the fog rolling in thick and heavy. As I approached the spot where I had picked her up, I saw her again. Standing by the roadside, her thumb outstretched, her eyes pleading. This time, I didn't stop. I kept driving, my hands gripping the wheel tightly, my heart racing. But as I drove, 
the fog seemed to close in around me, and I heard a soft, mournful whisper from the back seat. Help me. I glanced in the rearview mirror and saw her sitting in the back seat, her hollow eyes fixed on me. I slammed on the brakes, but when I turned around, the back seat was empty. The whispering stopped, and the fog began to lift. I drove home in silence, knowing that Emily's spirit was still out there, searching for a way to find peace. I've always worked late shifts, driving home in the dead of night when the world is asleep. It's a lonely drive, but I've gotten used to it. One night, as I was heading home along the deserted highway, I noticed something strange in the rearview mirror. A pair of headlights, far behind, steadily approaching. At first, I didn't think much of it. But as the minutes passed, the car behind me drew closer and closer, until it was practically tailgating me. Annoyed, I slowed down, expecting it to pass. But instead, it matched my speed, staying right on my bumper. My irritation turned to unease. Who would be driving like this at such an hour? I sped up, but the car stayed with me, its headlights glaring into my mirror. The road was empty, no turnoffs, no other cars in sight. Just me and this relentless vehicle. Suddenly, the car behind me swerved, pulling up alongside me. I glanced over, expecting to see some reckless driver, but what I saw made my blood run cold. The car was empty. There was no driver, no passengers, just a vacant, dark interior. Panic set in. I hit the gas, speeding down the highway, my heart pounding. But the car kept pace, its headlights blazing, as if taunting me. I couldn't shake it, no matter how fast I went or how many turns I took. It followed me, a ghostly shadow on my tail. I finally pulled into a gas station, my hands shaking as I gripped the steering wheel. I looked around, hoping to see the car somewhere in the lot, but it was gone, vanished as if it had never been there. I stepped out, trying to calm my nerves, convincing myself that it had all been a trick of the mind, a hallucination brought on by exhaustion. But deep down, I knew something was wrong. I felt watched, like there was someone, or something, just out of sight, waiting for me to let my guard down. I hurried inside the gas station, hoping the bright lights and human presence would ease my anxiety. As I paid for my coffee, I asked the clerk if he'd seen any cars pull in recently. He shook his head. You're the first customer I've had in hours. I drove home with every nerve on edge, constantly checking the mirrors, expecting the phantom car to reappear. But the rest of the drive was eerily quiet. By the time I got home, I was exhausted, my mind heavy with fear and confusion. I tried to put the incident out of my mind, but sleep didn't come easily. I kept seeing those empty headlights in my dreams, the hollow car chasing me through endless dark roads. I finally pulled into a gas station, my hands shaking as I gripped the steering wheel. I looked around, hoping to see the car somewhere in the lot, but it was gone, vanished as if it had never been there. I stepped out, trying to calm my nerves, convincing myself that it had all been a trick of the mind, a hallucination brought on by exhaustion. But deep down, I knew something was wrong. I felt watched, like there was someone, or something, just out of sight, waiting for me to let my guard down. I hurried inside the gas station, hoping the bright lights and human presence would ease my anxiety. As I paid for my coffee, I asked the clerk if he'd seen any cars pull in recently. He shook his head. You're the first customer I've had in hours. I drove home with every nerve on edge, constantly checking the mirrors, expecting the phantom car to reappear. But the rest of the drive was eerily quiet. By the time I got home, I was exhausted, my mind heavy with fear and confusion. I tried to put the incident out of my mind, but sleep didn't come easily. I kept seeing those empty headlights in my dreams, the hollow car chasing me through endless dark roads. Over the next few days, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. The phantom car haunted my thoughts, its image burned into my mind. I avoided driving at night, taking the bus instead, but the unease followed me everywhere. One night, as I sat in my car, preparing for the drive home, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye, a shape in the back seat.
My heart skipped a beat, but when I turned to look, the seat was empty. I shook my head, trying to clear the fog of fear that was clouding my mind. I started the engine, telling myself it was just my imagination, but as I drove, the sensation of being watched grew stronger. It was as if there was someone in the car with me, just out of sight. I glanced in the rearview mirror, expecting to see that empty, haunted car again. But this time, I saw something even worse, my own reflection distorted and wrong. My eyes were hollow, my skin pale, like a corpse staring back at me. I slammed on the brakes, pulling over to the side of the road. My heart was pounding, my breath coming in short gasps. I was losing my mind, there was no other explanation. But then I felt it, a cold breath on the back of my neck, a whisper in my ear. You can't escape. I spun around, but the car was empty. My skin crawled as I realized that whatever had haunted me on the road hadn't left. It had followed me home. The next few days were a blur of paranoia and fear. I couldn't concentrate at work, and I started avoiding my car altogether. But the feeling of being watched never left me. It was always there, a cold presence lurking just out of sight. One night, I couldn't take it anymore. I grabbed my keys and drove, not caring where I ended up. I needed to confront whatever was haunting me to put an end to this madness. I drove aimlessly, the city lights fading as I headed out into the countryside. The roads were dark and empty, just like the night of the encounter. I kept driving, pushing through the fear, until I found myself on that same lonely highway. And then, there it was, the phantom car, its headlights flaring to life in the distance. It appeared out of nowhere, just as it had before, and started following me. But this time, I didn't run. I slowed down, letting it catch up, daring it to show itself. As it pulled alongside me, I braced myself, expecting to see the same empty interior. But when I looked over, I saw something else. A reflection of myself, sitting in the driver's seat, staring back at me with hollow, lifeless eyes. The realization hit me like a truck. The car wasn't following me, it was me. Or rather, it was a twisted version of myself. A manifestation of my own fears and guilt, chasing me down, forcing me to confront the darkness within. I hit the brakes, the car skidding to a stop. The phantom car vanished, leaving only the night and the silence. But I knew it wasn't gone. It was inside me now, a part of me that I could never outrun. I've driven long distances for years, transporting goods across the country. I knew the roads well, or so I thought. One night, while driving through a remote area, I decided to take a shortcut, a narrow, unmarked road I'd never noticed before. The GPS showed it would shave off a good 30 minutes, so I took the turn without hesitation. The road was winding and dark, the trees on either side closing in like a tunnel. My headlights barely pierced the thick fog that seemed to rise from the ground itself. It was an eerie drive, but I kept going, confident that the road would lead me back to the highway soon. But as I drove, the road seemed to stretch on endlessly. The GPS lost signal, leaving me to rely on my instincts. The further I went, the more I realized something was wrong. The landscape never changed, just miles of the same twisted trees and fog, as if I were driving in circles. I tried turning around, but the road behind me looked just as unfamiliar as the one ahead. Panic began to creep in. I was lost, and the oppressive darkness felt like it was closing in on me. I kept driving, hoping to find a sign, a house, anything that could lead me back to civilization. But there was nothing. The radio only picked up static, and my phone was useless without a signal. Finally, I saw something, a mile marker on the side of the road. It was rusted and old, but it was a sign that I wasn't alone on this road. I slowed down to read it, but the numbers made no sense. It wasn't a typical mile marker. It was marked with strange symbols, almost like runes, and beneath them, a number. 666. I felt a chill run down my spine. I sped up, wanting to get as far away from that marker as possible. But then, to my horror, I saw another marker up ahead. It looked identical to the first one. I passed it, 
only to see another just a few hundred feet further. The same twisted symbols, the same ominous number. No matter how fast I drove, the markers kept appearing, as if the road was mocking my attempts to escape. The sense of dread grew with each one I passed. I had entered some place that wasn't meant for the living, and there was no way out. After what felt like hours, I saw something new, a figure standing on the side of the road. It was a man, his clothes ragged, his face obscured by the fog. He had his thumb out, a desperate hitchhiker in the middle of nowhere. Every instinct told me to keep driving, but something made me slow down. As I pulled up beside him, he turned to face me, and I saw his eyes. Empty, hollow, devoid of life. But before I could react, he vanished, dissolving into the fog like a wisp of smoke. I slammed on the brakes, my heart pounding. Had I imagined it? Was the road playing tricks on me? But then, I heard a thud on the roof of my car, followed by another. It sounded like footsteps, heavy and deliberate, moving slowly across the metal. Panic gripped me as the footsteps reached the back of the car. I floored the gas, speeding down the road, but the footsteps didn't stop. They kept pace with the car, matching my speed, until they suddenly stopped, leaving only the sound of my racing heartbeat. When I finally dared to look in the rearview mirror, I saw nothing but darkness and fog. The hitchhiker was gone, but the terror remained. I knew then that I wasn't alone on this cursed road, and whatever was out there wasn't human. Desperation took over as I drove faster and faster, trying to outrun whatever was haunting this road. But no matter how far I went, the road stretched on, the mile markers repeating like a broken record. It was as if the road had no end, a looping nightmare with no escape. Then, up ahead, I saw something that filled me with both hope and dread, a familiar sight. It was the entrance to the highway, the very same spot where I had taken the wrong turn hours ago. But something was off. The road wasn't the same. It was older, more decrepit, as if it had been abandoned for decades. I slowed down as I approached the entrance, fear gnawing at me. But I had no other choice. I had to take it to find a way back to the real world. As I made the turn, I glanced at the rearview mirror one last time, expecting to see the fog and darkness closing in. But instead, I saw the hitchhiker again, sitting in the back seat, his hollow eyes staring at me through the mirror. He didn't speak, didn't move, just watched me with a vacant, eerie calm. I looked back, but the back seat was empty. When I turned my eyes to the road again, I found myself back on the highway, the night clear and the fog gone. The nightmare was over, or so I thought. I made it home, but the sense of unease never left me. Every time I drive at night, I find myself glancing in the rearview mirror, expecting to see that spectral hitchhiker. I avoid that part of the highway, but sometimes, when the night is especially dark and the fog rolls in, I hear the faint sound of footsteps on the roof of my car, and I know the road hasn't let me go.